Alrighty, hello everybody. What's clucking peeps? Welcome to Harry Tail Farm. I'm Georgiana. Today we're going to do a few things. I'm going to get started. I'm going to make myself some tea. We're going to make some sweet potato flatbread. And we're going to try out my new microgreens growing kit that I got from Mountain Valley Seed Company. But first, for fun, I want to show you. It's really kind of close. These beautiful roses. Before they go, aren't they gorgeous? They're just so pretty. It's a sweet gift for Easter. Been enjoying those. But let's make our tea. Um, I recently did a tea video and I got this tea tumbler from Mountain Rose Herbs over on Home and Homestead. She has an affiliate link for Mountain Rose Herbs. Uh, check her out because she's doing a lot of herb gardening right now too. But um, I love this tea tumbler. So it's got, it's glass. It's double walled and um, the lid comes off, of course, easy to clean. And the bottom unscrews and you've got your built-in filter that unscrews off of there. And I got my 500 mile chai. Because with my chronic health issues, I need help with energy. I like how this infuser section is kind of big in case you've got you know, like the little rosebuds or our lar larger dried herbs. A lot, you know, they'll take up more space, but they'll fit in here good. Get my tea ready. Um, yesterday, I, with dinner, I just threw in a couple extra sweet potatoes. I just them in the oven like this. I give a quick wash, but I know I'm going to take the skins off. I cook. It was like 400 degrees for like an hour. I just throw them in there and cook them forever. You can see how much the they'll shrivel up, but they are so, um, there's two parts to that. The skin comes off so easily, and I like how it gets some caramelization on there. Adds extra flavor. And you could boil them in a pot on the stove, uh, but then... With the nature of what we're doing, trying to make a tortilla or a flatbread, any flour-based thing is the moisture factor will be different. So it's fine. You just might end up having to keep adding more flour. It's really not going to be many measurements of this. Um, I'm going to use two flours today. I want to try and add at least some wheat. Um, I'm going to start with half a cup of wheat and also use white flour. You know, so it's not too too heavy. Let's get this chopped up. I just try mashing this right on the board. No need for a bowl because we're going to end up putting this just right on the counter. I clean the counter really good. Mash right here. So these potatoes are cold. Like I said, I did this yesterday. I just took them out of the fridge. Um, I don't think you want them too warm. Alrighty. Got this all mashed up. Fold this out on the countertop where we will add our flour. So let's go to adding our flour. Let's see. Don't need the knife, but let me just smash that down a bit. Create a little bed for our flour to start. I've got a one cup measure here. It's a little bit over like half a cup. I, I believe this will take more than a cup of flour. I kind of want to do half wheat, half white. White will lighten it up a bit. There we go. There's some white flour, about a half cup. Add a little bit of salt. Enhance the flavor. We'll add a little olive oil here in a minute. Just start mixing this together. Tablespoon of olive oil. Fold that in. I'm 
And those were two, I would just say, regular size sweet potatoes. As far as portion, that's why also your flour might be variable. We'll work towards the texture. I've got just about, I could tell probably just a little over a cup of flour going right now. Still a little sticky at this point. So I'm gonna add a little more flour here. From here on, when I add flour, I'm just gonna add the white flour. Um, to help with the stickiness and everything. A little sprinkle there. Takes that sweet potato a little time to absorb the flour and see how much moisture you're gonna have left. Once I need this for a bit, this is probably gonna be good for right now once I get this flour incorporated in. We're gonna cover it, um, put it in a bowl and cover it and let it rest for about half an hour. We could add more flour then. So here we go, let's pop it in our bowl. Alrighty, gonna let that rest for a bit. I'm gonna clean up and then we'll be back. We'll do the microgreens. Okay, somehow I recorded this section in slow motion with no audio. So opening the kit, it's a cute little microgreens kit. It comes with three packets of organic seeds. It has a water tray, a base to put your coconut fiber, which is your soil base. And you put a wick in there so it sucks up the water from the bottom tray to keep watering the soil. Uh, but we need to let the coconut fibers get wet and absorb some water. So I'll be adding uh, water in and let this sit for a few minutes until it gets all fluffy. And then spread it out. Put your seeds in. I'm going to start with the radish seeds. And I only need to use part of the package. Okay, it's been a few minutes and I've let this the soil grow. I realized I made a blooper though. So let me correct myself. A lot of the seeds that the seed company uh, gets is from Mountain um, Mountain Valley Seed Company. But the actual website is True Leaf Market. There is a link in the description box below. And again, it, it is an affiliate link, but they've got a lot of great seeds. Here's upcoming gardening I'm going to be doing. I just love their seed packets. But see, again, these are Mountain Valley Seed Company. Um, yeah, a wide variety. Summer squash, red pear tomato. Lilac bell sweet potato, sweet to, sweet pepper. My goodness, can I read? Organic tender bush green beans, American flag leeks. I got some leeks because they said they can grow in shadier areas, which my raised tire beds, because those tires were already sitting there, is partially under a tree. So they won't get full sun all day. So I'm going to do that. But back to this. Let's get our little wet soil pods spread out. So we could plant our seeds. Here's so dirty. Okay. So I'm gonna do start with the organic purple radish microgreens this week. Purple's my favorite color. <laughs> I don't know if they're gonna show up purple, but let's just sprinkle these about. I don't think I have to do the whole packet. Um again, this is my first time. We'll see. We'll see. Not a bunch there, but there's still a lot in there. Spread these out and get them kind of just buried in there. Mix it up so that they're covered. This little gadget is actually just a mini spritzer. So if you want to spritz your greens, especially if it's really hot, which here it is not. Let me go ahead and fill this up so it's already whoosh. A cute little spritzing bottle. That's just adorable. I love it. Little miniature. Oh, that is just so cute. Love it. So I'll keep this by there. And then this is the dome lid to create that little greenhouse effect. So it'll help keep the moisture in there so they don't just dry out. Okay, here we are. I put my little micro green kit in the window, hopefully ready to grow. Next to my really big aloe vera plant that's doing really well. Got it was my shop local video I did in December. I got that for $3 um, at the local herb shop up in Mount Pleasant, Utah, at Kathy's Herb Shop. That's wonderful.
keep my little spritzer right next to it. And while I'm here, I am going to water my aloe vera plant. There we go. Alrighty, well, I hope you enjoyed this little gardening segment. We will be back in a week to see how this turns out. But now we will get back to our sweet potato flatbread. Okay, back to our sweet potato flatbreads. First off, this is the same countertop where I was just gardening. <laughs> I disinfected it, my hands, with a fingernail brush, just so you know, <laughs> keeping it clean. Let's go ahead and put some flour out on our surface. Yep, a wee bit sticky. So we're probably gonna have to add some more. Let me get some flour on top. Getting it to where it's not, it can be a tad bit, you know, tacky, but not sticky. I'm kind of form it into a log here. Just homemade pieces of bread, they don't have to be exact. Use this spatula. Don't know if these will be too big, we'll see. I'm gonna try cutting them into eight pieces. little discs or balls together. See. Just keep adding flour as you need. The flatter you can get these, the more like tortillas they will be. Or you can just go for flatbreads. Kind of depends on what you're aiming for. I tend to really like flatbreads. It's I guess you can use them like uh, folded over like pitas for sandwiches. Pull apart for soups and salad dinners variety that way okay
Okay, I'm really pleased with how these have turned out. I'm impressed with how flat I was able to get these. If you watched my last tortilla making recipe, which turned out to be flatbreads, because it was my first tortilla making recipe, I'm new at this. I like when a recipe turns out, this is my first time making this, a sweet potato, wheat, flatbreads, or tortillas, however you want. Um, extra health, so let's get these out here. I've got my pan preheated, it's uh, slightly greased. Uh, over medium to high heat and um, we'll go ahead and get these cooking just do a minute or two on each side and I'll get cooking through these we'll see how they turn out and do a little taste test All right, here we are, all done. I keep them under a slightly damp dishcloth to keep them moist and warm, so they're all flexible. Um, they are pliable. I started getting more bubbles towards the end. It does help to brush off a little extra dust or dust, <laughs> flour, so that it uh, blends it a little bit better. But they are all just soft and good. See the beginning here, I didn't um, dust them off so much. But you can tell, but it was just fine. It just appears wise, you know, it's a little better. So let's go ahead and give them a taste. These are a little more like a slightly thick tortilla, tortilla flatbread. You could use them as some sort of a wrap. Like I said, soups, salads, tortillas, quesadillas, you know, burritos, tacos, whatever you want to make. Mm, soft, moist, tender. The sweet potato really helps keep them moist. And the plus is with these, we know all the ingredients that are in them, simple ingredients. Um, the extra nutrition for the sweet potato, it's about 50% wheat flour. We know we're using unbleached white flour. If you're using white flour, you know, you pick an organic flour, do the best you can. Um, but no other weird ingredients, a little bit of olive oil and salt. That's all we need. I hope you give it a try. Uh, let me know if you find these this recipe useful. I'll keep you up to date on my little microgreens. We'll check in on those next week. It does help if you like, share, and subscribe or comment below. Um, give me a thumbs up. I am trying to grow my channel and get to those thousand subscribers. I know a lot of us beg for that, but it's a little hard to break through on YouTube. But it is so much fun, and I'm hopefully helping a lot of people. Like I said, I'm working on six chronic health conditions and working on losing weight. I am shy about being on camera. Uh... Because of that, I'm not judgmental of others, but I'm so afraid of judgment and just comfort. You know, it's very awkward. But let me know, you know, let me know what you think. What all are you dealing with? A lot of us have different health issues. Mine are all like more autoimmune and, anti, you know, inflammatory based um, health issues and chronic pain. But I'm working on improving and eating as healthy as possible most of the time. Don't have to commit to everything all the time. Still have some fun, right? Of course, I think my healthy recipes I've been coming up with are yummy. And they are fun. So stay tuned. Hope to see you in the next video. Thanks, everybody. Dinner later that evening. Scrambled eggs for my girls with some Kobe Jack cheese. Diced tomatoes, a little sour cream. And grilled zucchini and poblano peppers with my sweet potato. Tortilla. There we go. Delish.